definitely weirdly shivering. Is that normal? <sighs> What's up, Hello? everybody? Welcome to another fan-made episode of Hot Ones. Ooh. If you're unfamiliar with the real show, you can catch it on First We Feast with Sean Evans. Watch your favorite celebrities eat spicy wings and answer spicy questions. So, for our third episode, I'm joined by Chris. Chris. AKA Nuisance. AKA, AKA Nuisance 88. Yeah, I'll put your handle down below. AKA The Streets Peter Parker. There you go. You can't find me on the internet with that one. I just like to tell people that I'm The Streets Peter Parker. So, uh, so you know, your wife was uh, up to bat last and she made it all the way through. How, yeah. are, how, are, you, how are you feeling? You're, you're, the bar has been set by your wife. Okay. Are you, how, how are you with spicy food? I'm pretty good with spicy food. Pretty good with spicy uh, food. On my father's side of the family, we believe in going hard with some spicy stuff, so I'd be alright. I need to pick all the chicken off of the bone, right? If my um, mom sees this, she'll be really upset you, if I don't eat the it wing is, all the way. It is entirely up to you what you want to do. You can... I'm going to say, like, the first si first six are easy. Okay. You can clean the wing. The last four, if you want to clean the wing... I kind of feel like... That's up to you. I'll I'll be right there with you. My, mom, if you're watching this, I'm going to do it because I, I know you don't. I'll join you. you can't leave me on the bone. If man. you want. Okay, it's ready? Good look. You ready for the first one? Yeah. Do we cheers it? Uh, if you want to. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Unfortunately, these are cold by now, but this is Valentina Black Label. You sure this one's Valentina? This is Valentina. You sure about that? You got a little kick to it? Are you 100% sure that this is Valentina? More harm for her. Because it smells like ghost peppers to me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> smell that. Oh no, you started the wrong way. That's the hottest one. It's fine. That is the hottest one. You just... <laughs> okay, well, you seem to be taking it in stride, so... So, my first question for you. You just, you actually just came back from Cuba, doing a bunch of cool shit there, filming a documentary. How was the scene out there? Tell us about Cuba. Cuba was awesome. <laughs> um, if you guys get the chance, go to Cuba, bring something for the Cuban people. You know, the whole embargo thing's crazy. There was a plane crash while I was down there, which was crazy, which uh, I'm afraid of flying as it is, so, like... Having to think about the plane crash was um, upsetting just because it was an old airplane. But uh, we yeah. made it back safely. Um, met a lot of awesome people. I learned a lot of awesome things. And um, they're only 90 miles away from Florida. So they're only 90 miles away from us. Yeah. And I don't know. We're so close that it doesn't seem like it. But we got a lot of similarities going on. Yeah. So the Cuban people are dope. Nice. Go, go to Cuba. You were there. Do for something a, for the people. You were there for a, f a futsal tournament, right? Yeah, we were putting on a futsal tournament. Um, it was our plan to have this kind of big, crazy tournament go down with all these moving parts. And uh, there's a documentary about it, so I don't want to tell you guys how it ends. But we learned a lot, and it was really cool. Nice. There were some twists and turns. How was the art scene out there? I know it's really big out there. Uh, ridiculously crazy. Saw some of the best art I've ever seen while I was out there, and I absolutely loved it. Art wow. was also very inexpensive. Bought a lot of art. Nice. Wish I'd have bought some more music. I didn't buy too much music. And by too much, I mean any. Nice. But you can't get Cuban records here, so I should have got some while I was there. Well, Chris, I'm surprised you're, you're taking that absolutely in stride. But are you ready for wing number two? I that's, am ready for that's this number is two. wing number two. That one is like number two. Like reading a book. <laughs> this is Crystal, Louisiana. So since you've already faced the dragon, I mean, this should be a walk in the park for you now. Your roots are in Gary. Truth. So far, I'm not making my mom proud. And is it true that you lived there when Original Gangsters was filming? <laughs> I did live there while Original Gangsters was filming. And is it true that uh, that was a big influence on you on becoming a videographer? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so no one's seen this movie. If you have seen Original Gangsters before I suggest it, mad props to you. I don't know, I don't know where your lifestyle is. Uh, so you can find it on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. I think that's where I watched it. At. Go look for it. All right, it's called Original Gangsters. It's about um, these old people who come back to Gary, and they're like, "Our city's all run by these young punks." Actually, this guy's kid gets killed. It's a good movie. Uh, the grocery store that the first guy gets shot down in, and the old man gets shot in. Uh, this is like the grocery store we used to walk to. My mom used to be like, "It's called ABCs." She would go go down to ABCs and like pick up some stuff, or here's a couple of dollars, like go have fun. So we'd walk down there and do that, and it's awesome, man. Uh, but like we watched them while they were filming it. I remember. There's a scene where this guy gets shot in the foot, and I remember they shot it like, probably like 20 times. Like, we're just watching it. It was in like my first understanding. They're like, oh man, like there go, there's a lot like, behind making movies and stuff. It was cool. Oh, I was okay. once making movies after seeing it. First time you saw, like, there's actually multiple takes. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you just take, oh yeah, you just film a movie. But, like, I was a kid, I was like, man, they're doing this a bunch of times. And yeah. I was like, yeah, they gotta get, get them angles. Yeah. So, um, it was dope. Awesome. Go watch original games. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, wing number three. Ready? Yep. This is secret aardvark. Ooh, out what's of, what's the aardvark secret? It's uh, out of Portland. It's a habanero-based sauce. Oh. Number three, I want to take you back to your college years. You went to college with uh, Surge. I did. And I just kind of hung around there. I thought you went to school there. I learned this year <laughs> that you did not. I did not go to school there. I, I just hung around. We were actually rivals for some film competitions, particularly the 48-hour film festival. That did we were. One year that you guys, your team made a badass movie, and you guys won, actually. You want to you wanna take the fans through what a 48-hour yeah. film festival is and what your project was? And Before that, I want to pat myself on the own back. We won two years, actually. We won one year. The year I wasn't on that team, they did win. And then when I came back, they did win. I didn't do a lot on the team. I just made the music <laughs> and I acted it a little bit, but still, it feels good to know that I was one of the, the moving parts. So, uh, 48 Hour Film Festival, you get a you get like a secret envelope and it tells you some of the things and you uh, you get what genre of movie you're gonna make. You have to have a certain character in it and a certain line to do this to ensure that you don't make a movie ahead of time and then just like put it out. So after you get it, you get it on a Friday night and you have until Sunday night to write, shoot, edit. And like get this movie together, and um, I was on a winning team. My very first year, uh, I was with some other guys we went to college with. Our movie was called The Dark Black Night Night. Dark Black it was Night. Really N I G H T Night K N I G H T. Uh, we were extremely jealous when we saw it because we got superhero. And this was like, what year was this? Had to be like 2011, 2012. Like this was like everybody wanted to make a superhero movie. We were like, Fuah! like let's go. So. We were hyped for it, and like we just happened to be a bunch of like super silly dudes, and like they wrote it up. You uh, have a maybe, link for it? Oh, yeah, I do got a link. We found a link. Uh, the the one part I'm most excited about in it is in the link. If you listen to it, listen to the music at the end because I make the music for the big fight sequence, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and there's also a I made the sound effect for the orange. There's a, <laughs> there's a there's an orange scanner, and I made the sound effect for that. And oh, like because you, that was the that was the prop. Yeah, that was the you had to include. It was um. It was the, the sound is hilarious. Also, I have Mickey's Forty Eight Hour Film. Yeah, I have that. Watch. Go ahead and just watch ours first. Yeah, yeah because it's just. I got the link. Please don't watch it after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for wing, wing number, number four? four? Yeah, this man. This is everybody's favorite. This is the Scotch Bonnet with ginger. Cheers. Here we go. Mmm. I hope you can ask me a sweet question now. That one's good. It's time, Chris. Now, for explain that, Graham. Where we do a deep drive. Do a deep drive on your Instagram. Find silly pictures, things that we think need more context. Sweet. You fill us in. Although, you have a surprisingly normal Instagram. You, I know, right? So I had to go deep diving on your Facebook instead. Oh. <laughs> so what's going on in this picture, Chris? Uh, this is uh, me and my not bro playing at the Melody Inn. I'm in a band, if you guys didn't know that already. Uh, this is uh, me and my not brother, uh, John Knott, playing at a uh, punk rock venue. It says punk rock in between us. We're very obviously not punk rock. I've got a bunch of synthesizers over there. Um, and I am more than likely screaming my face off because I'm uh, making robot sounds. You have to scream to make these robot sounds. While we're on here, I kind of wanted to expand on this. So, how you, you and John are actually best friends. You guys have been best friends, brothers, pretty much for, for a minute. Yeah, we've known um, each other since tenth grade, but we weren't friends in tenth grade. I kind of hated them. Really? Yeah. Oh, so this is a this is like a. We didn't become friends until like two thousand eight, and tenth grade would have been in two thousand four. And, so. and when did you guys discover that you had uh, musical talents together and started the band? Up? Well, he was in uh he was in show choir, and I was in marching band all through high school. And even before high school, and we like kind of just jam around and like play around. We did a lot of uh, karaoke and stuff together. And, I had a pocket little little pocket operator that was making music, and John was just like, "We should start a band where you play stupid little instruments like that, and we make songs about butts." I was like, "All right." <laughs> and then for some reason, people wanted to continue to listen to our music, so I bought more synthesizers and I put in the work, man. Nice, man. Yeah, you guys have uh, had the opportunity to rock out some uh, a lot of venues. What's what's one of your favorite venues uh, that you played at? Top tier, one of the favorite has always been uh, Square Cat because when we're doing it at Square Cat, it's uh, it's it's quiet. It's not quiet, but like the people are close. The sound guys know how to run our sound really well. I got a lot of weird synthesizers, so they gotta like they already know how to do that, and like everybody's like close and pulled in together. And I mean, it sounds awesome. Would you be willing to share your least favorite? <laughs> least favorite? Uh, oh hell yeah! All right, um, man, there's so many. You play so many bad shows. Uh, our least favorite venue we played at was this place called GPC. It wasn't a real venue, it's like a clothing store, but we were playing there, 
It was our very first show. Uh, right before the show, John couldn't get tuned right. A microphone broke, and I had to suddenly use his microphone. We blew two speakers and had to play the rest of the night out of an amp, and it sounded like ultra trash, but people got live with us, and we made it work. And then we came back to that venue, like, probably like six months later, and we fucking rocked it. All right, next picture. What's going down here? Cliff diving! Cliff diving. And my black and white U.S. shorts with a little bit of underwear at the top because they were kind of too big. Uh, this was, I want to say it was the first time we went cliff diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy Grizz had a, he worked at Sprint, so he had a, a wide angle lens on his camera. So he, on his phone, so he strapped that on there and then he just jumped off the cliff. I've been there with you. There's a very, very tall one that I will never, ever, ever go on. I did the tall one one time. I'll never do it again. You can see the world spin under your feet when you jump off of it. You've got too much time to think about your life and all your decisions you've ever made. What's going Dang. on here? <laughs> I'm trying out for The Walking Dead. No, it's um, it's uh, the zombie walk in Broad Ripple. And uh, I got some zombie makeup going on. Don't lie, you got into a fight. Yep, I got into a fight and I was zombified in said fight. Um, that hat was on its way out, but I missed that hat. I missed that hat a lot. So this was the zombie run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, everybody goes to Broad Ripple on like the, well, it's like the, the Friday right before um, Halloween. And a whole bunch of people get together and you just walk around the streets of Broad Ripple dressed like a zombie, usually getting tanked on alcohols. Don't drink if you're under 21, kids. No, don't drink if you're over 21, it's overrated. All right, Chris, it's time for wing number five. Weep, weep. This is uh, this is Hot One's own sauce. This is the fiery chipotle. Mm. Mm, it's good. You're not allowed to be around sharp objects because you almost chopped your friend's arm off with a sword once. <laughs> Care to elaborate? Well, first off, it was his hand, not his whole arm. <laughs> Second off, I was wearing a onesie with spaceships on it when it happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my best homie, uh, B, aka Jody B, aka DJ B Smooth, aka DJ Star Fox. He's never gonna see this. We were living together. It was my first roommate I ever had after college, or I was still in college. And um, we we're supposed to be working on music this day, but we weren't. He was like my DJ and producer. And I was like the rapper. I was a way worse rapper back then, and like a lazy artist. I'm still kind of a lazy artist. But uh, we were supposed to be working on something, we weren't. So he comes in my room, and I was riding his moped at the time. I had to lock it up with a chain. He came in with part of the chain. He was all like, <laughs> he was like, hey man, like if you don't come work on this, I'm gonna have to beat you with this chain. And I had these swords on my wall, and I just pulled the sword off. And I was like, we're gonna have to fight about it then. And like, we don't like fight, like, psh, psh. we just like kind of mess around. And he wraps this uh, chain around the sword. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'm done. And I go to put the knife back on the wall, but it's really sharp. And I didn't notice he was holding the chain. And so when I pulled the knife, I just slid it across his fingers, like with that much pressure too. It was a really, really, really sharp knife. And I put it back. And then when I looked at his hand, it was, these four fingers were folded over like hot dog meat and it was shiny white bones, just all the way down. And my first thought was, stop playing. How did you do that? And I just looked at his hand and he looked at his hand and we looked at each other, and then back in his hand, and then the blood started coming. And he was like, call the cops. So <laughs> he goes, I'll oh, call the ambulance. So um, he goes in the bathroom, and he's standing in the bathtub, because this is a ton of blood. More blood than anybody's ever seen. <laughs> it's either me or him, but he's freaking out. And so while I'm on the phone with 911, I, uh, I start yelling at him. Um, excuse my friend. Like, Quit being a little bitch. You'll be all right. It's fine, man. It's fine. And he had just he had his wisdom teeth taken out earlier that week. He was like, first my wisdom teeth, and now this. And I was like, shut up, man. It's fine. And the lady on the phone was like, keep yelling at him. Don't let him go into shock. You're doing good. And I was like, oh, I was just like freaking out. So, so I like really doubled down. And uh, and then yeah, the EMTs came, and they um, they wrapped up his hand and they they took him out of there. And then I'm sitting in our apartment alone, and one of the EMTs tracked in dog poop, and it stinks, and like. I'm like having this moment, and then his girlfriend walks in, and she's like, where's Jody? And I'm like, uh, she, goes, she like looks at the blood, she's like, what did you do? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh God, no, even worse. And she like leaves to go like to the hospital, and I call my mom, and I'm just like, how do you clean up blood? <laughs> she's like, I'm on the way over with, with a bucket and some bleach. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, um, we um, ended our roommate-ness. Uh, went to the hospital with him that night and stayed while he was getting worked on. Cut a... All the ligaments and tendons in his fingers. They put it back together. He's got a cool scar. I'm pretty sure that story has gotten him laid at least once. <laughs> Does so, it work? Yeah, it works. It's cold all the time now <laughs> because of that. Um, yeah, he, uh, we didn't talk for a minute. 
we uh we we rebonded when we had to go buy a green screen together and i would so, imagine so that was good we're still friends i just talked to him last week <laughs> it's my boy all right chris it's time for wing number five Woo-hoo. this is dirty dicks <laughs> yep it's a aggressive brand name but it claims to be the best hot sauce in the world all right cheers to dirty dicks so you tell me It's a tropical twist. That's what it says on there. It's kind of different, right? There it is. We just both ate a dirty dick. Boom. Holler. It's perfect. You're wearing that shirt. That's my next question. about your career in the brewery. Woo! Drink beer. Tell us what it was like working in the brewery, designing stuff for them, and have you gained enough knowledge to where if you had the equipment, do you think you could brew your own beer now? Yes, I do think I could brew my own beer. I would do it terribly. This gig started off with, uh, I had applied for the, um... For a position in sales, everybody kept telling me I'd be good at sales. And it was always my plan to work at the brewery and in the tasting room serving beer until I got a higher job there. And I applied for the sales one, and they were like, hey, we have some bad news about the sales one. You like did a good interview, but in there you said you would um, like to be doing video, so ta-da, you get a video position. So my job is the art assistant, which means that I do a lot of the, um, I print a lot of the menus, a lot of the in-house stuff. I cut a lot of banners. But they gave me a chance to like do some videos, and then I've just been starting to kind of do videos there, and I do like most all of the photos. Yeah, it's been fun. I like it. I get to do some uh, pretty fun, <laughs> ridiculous things like ASMR videos and weird stuff like that. It's a cool culture to work in. Everybody's really cool, and we get a ton of beer. It is awesome. Any events are fun. It is a fun place. Okay, Chris. These last four, I'm no longer gonna extra dabble on them you can if you want to well <laughs> when in Rome are you gonna do it I mean honestly if you if you started with that one and you haven't touched your uh, milk yet I, I think you're gonna that's the problem I think you're gonna pass you need to really like I or think, maybe or maybe. I think you need to get the sauce I know me and I know that getting that sauce you know what man that's gonna I can't that's gonna like my mouth is watering right now because it knows how hot this is gonna be then then I then I can find find I will I will so, the, like, these last four are crazy I'm definitely yeah okay here we go wing number seven the zombie apocalypse R.I.P. uh Nash de la vie it is gluten free and organic oh well that's good it's, my my, my butt will think that as well <laughs> Yep. You got a revel in it. There it is. You got a revel in it. All right, man. So I wanted to save some juicy questions for the end. So I've heard when you've had a bad day, the first thing you'd like to do is go mess with some music. That is accurate. It seems to be very close and near and dear to your heart. Chris, what does music mean to you? What What does it do for you? Music is a way for me to directly express myself without having to actively think about it. So, when it comes to expressing myself in videos, I have to think about the meaning and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But with music, I just kind of do what I feel inside. It's also a good way to connect with people when you and another person are playing music and you hit that jam and you hit like that flow where you understand where each other is going without talking about it. It's really beautiful. It's really fun. You bond. And I think that's kind of the closest you can be to a person without having sex with them. Mm-hmm. Until I teach Marquette how to play the ukulele, and I do both. All right. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> are you, are you going to dab it? You're sweating, big dog. This is my interview now. Ain't no backing down. You're damn right we're dabbing it. Where no man has gone Don't before. Do I'm not doing a lot. I just need a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, would, I would peck. I would peck yep, that one. Yep, 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 yep. You'll be damned if you can clear that wing. Although you, you're you're taking it. Is that enough? Is one drop literally too much? I'll say this one is the hardest one for me personally to get through. You don't have to move it. I know, but I mean, come on. In man. the arms of an angel. <sighs> oh Lord. I mean, if, if if Chris is gonna go there, you know, I gotta. I gotta, I gotta follow, man. Gotta My mouth follow. is your mouth getting like the the mouth juices? My mouth uh-huh. is so juicy. Well, see, each of these spices hit you differently. 
So, here we go, Chris. Wing number eight. This is the bomb beyond insanity. Yep. It's got a nuclear warhead on the bottle. Yep. It was made with... Mm. It's so good, though. Really? Mmm. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's okay. <coughs> Where's the, did you get more water? Uh, Where's the paper towels? Uh, ask, ask the question! <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. Technical difficulties. Alright, Chris. Is it true that you crashed a formal party one time by jumping into a pool, either naked or and or in your underwear? <sighs> <sighs> yes, I did. It was the same day I broke my knee. I broke my knee that, and then went to this party. Really? Yeah. Damn it, because I was a question. Okay, well, maybe you can tell us about that, too, because that was going to be a separate question. <sighs> I exist. I broke my knee and then rode my bike. <clears throat> I broke my knee and then rode my bike to a friend's party. Yes, I was drunk. If you're riding your bike with a broken knee, I mm. imagine you would have to be on something. I, I was freestyle battling my roommates and I was standing on the table. And then I jumped off the table and the floor was covered in vodka. And I slipped. My knee popped. It was really loud. It sucked. <sighs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Get it on that big dog. And uh, we figured we should just keep drinking. Mm. 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 This is the hottest it's ever been. We figured we should just keep drinking. So, we did. And I rode to a different party. And at that party, I, uh... At that party... Mm. This is why you don't get cocky. At that party... There was a party happening across the street. I wanted to go to it, because I like to crash parties. So I went inside. Mm. They had an open bar. I would also like to tell everybody that this party was hosted by uh, a guy who I think might have been the top of the gay community in Indianapolis. There was about 100 dudes at this party, dressed very fancy. And I was like, hell yeah, let's fucking party. But they weren't using the pool, so I uh, took it upon myself to jump in the pool. They took it out twice. Did I came back later, and they threw me out again. Did you, did you strip down? I was in my underwear, yeah. <sighs> I didn't want to get my pants wet. Epic. It was dumb. Um, I hope I didn't offend them. I did think, though, that I was the highlight of their party. They're all probably talking about that one time that asshole jumped in the pool, and we had to throw him out like Jazzy Jeff. And then I woke up on the couch the next day, Something. and I couldn't walk. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you still with me? You still got this? Because we're on to wing number nine. This is called Blair's Mega Death Sauce. Yeah, whatever. This, this used to be the hottest sauce on the show. They didn't think that was good enough, so there, it's now the second hottest sauce on the show. Although, we're in season six now, so it doesn't even exist anymore. So I might throw up. Just a little bit. You might? Just a little bit. Do you need, a, do you need a bin? Yeah, where's the bin? There's a bin right there. Perfect. I'm just <sighs> chugging this milk, so. Here we go. We can get it ready for you. Definitely weirdly shivering. Is that normal? <sighs> cool. So what's next? What's the question, Doc? Next question is about a classic John and Chris adventure. Uh, what were you guys arrested for in Terre Haute? Oh, well. John wasn't with me. We didn't go to college in Terre Haute. He went to college in here. Really? That yeah. was one of his favorite memories with you getting arrested in Terre Haute. He said... What the asshole. <laughs> I got arrested by myself in Terre Haute. I walked in to, I was going to the third floor, the fourth floor. I accidentally get off on the third floor because I'm drunk. I was in college. It was a time of drinking. And I walk in this girl's room and she's sitting there. And I'm like, oh, shit, my B, wrong room. But she has like a nice camera. And I'm like, hey, that camera? <clears throat> that camera's dope. It's a nice camera. And I leave out of the room. Oh, 
Then I go to my buddy's room to hang out. And then when I leave, the police are downstairs. And they were like, were you on the third floor? Mm. And I was like, <laughs> no, I wasn't on the third floor. I was, but I, I didn't know what they were asking. And I didn't trust them. So they let me go. And then the next day, um, the police came into campus while I was in a lecture with a composer who was like this like well-known black composer. And he was talking about like the struggles of the community and whatnot. And the police walk in. They're like, is Chris Johnson here? And there's like 100 people here. And they all turn and look at me. <laughs> So then I got arrested, and they're like, this girl says you came in her room, grabbed her camera, took it out of her room, brought it back into the room, set it down, and then that was it. And I was like, okay, well, that didn't happen. They're like, they're like that's, uh, that's attempted burglary. Mm. So I went to jail for attempted burglary, which is a class B or class C felony. I was in jail for five days. Oh, no. Um, when I went to the judge to ask um, to be let out, he told me my crimes were very serious, and there was a guy in the crowd who had shot his wife's dog in the head. <clears throat> that guy got to go home. I did not. He was an older white dude who the judge knew by name. So my mom asked uh, how much was bail and the judge says it's uh, $70,000. My mom asked, can he lower it? She has $100 and he lowers it to $50,000. And then I spend five days in jail until we get a bail's bond. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be a whimsical story. <clears throat> I thought this was gonna be a classic no. Chris and John romp. Well, mm. let me ask you, I'll cut this part out. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Some bullshit. It's about how the system fucked me over. For one, yeah, sure. I, I got off with trespassing because that's what happened. But um, it was Terre Haute. Uh, Terre Haute's a little racist. The judge was being a snooty fuckboy. I don't know what's in his heart, but I'm not going to have to play the race card. He let a nicer, older gentleman go home. That guy was a, he fucking killed a dog I with a gun. Like that, I feel like that's a little bit worse. Mm. I feel like that's a lot of bit worse. But here I am, a free man and proud and that's it. Well, Chris, maybe these wings being lightly sauced might have saved you in the beginning because you started on the wrong end, buddy. But it didn't seem to affect you. Until the last one. However, wing number 10 is the last dab. And... Our phone goes are gonna fall. But it's tradition to do what we've already been doing. Put a little extra dab on the last wing. This My body is, made, is shaking, I'm shaking. I'll have to say this has gotta be hotter than Marquetta's because Marquetta was relatively okay, I feel like. Well, here's a new standard I set. All you fuckers that went before me, y'all got it easy. From here on out, you make sure you get some of that sauce on your tongue. You don't need a whole lot. Also, you don't have to do this, but I know you're not going to back down. I don't know why I'm shaking. All right. You're going to have to kind of tap it on there. It's not a runny sauce. The thickness. It's not runny. You can tap it. Trust me, you'll be okay. Just, or you can okay. tap it on the plate and smear it. However you want to no, do no, it. I got some. I got some. Okay. All right. This is another hot one sauce. Can we? Hang on. Can we just do it? I'm so scared. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Wing number 10. The last dab. Master V. Master V. Chris, I want to end on a romantic note. Let me go to some. Laska. actually a good segue that you're speaking Czech because you're married to a beautiful Czech woman. Thank you. Marquetta. Can you tell us about how you met? What was that first date like? I know there were some shenanigans going down. We met on Tinder and our first date, uh, you know, I knew she was like foreign, like I saw it in the profile, but I really knew she was foreign when she called me instead of texting. I was like, holy shit. And she goes, I will be there in an hour. I just took a shower. Or no, she said, I just got a shower. I was like, all right, hell yeah. And she comes down. I think she had on these white pants with these high heels and this red shirt, like a red sweater. I don't know, like teacher glasses, looking all good. But she got in an accident with this guy, and he's South African. So now they're arguing, and I'm standing there, and I'm confused. And the guy's like, what would you have done if I would have driven away? And she goes, you're an asshole. You'd be dead. And I was like, holy shit, this is, this is going down. And then um, usually <coughs> the first date, you want to grab a beer. But uh, Marquette wasn't uh, drinking because she was driving. She didn't even check. They're really big against drinking and driving so she didn't do that so we just hung out and we talked and that was our first date it ended 
But if I could, I'd like to talk about our second date. Yes, absolutely. We want to hear everything Chris and Marquette are related. You tell us all the shenanigans, all the fun stuff. Oh, we better part out. But on our second date, it's when we kind of really like hit it off. She, uh, she rode her bike down from like 100 blocks away or something crazy like that. I can't do the math. My mouth's on fire. She rode her bike and I met her halfway and we hung out in Broad Ripple and we got a salad and some pizza and that time she was on her bike so we actually got to get a couple beers. We just like talked, man. And, like I learned about her. I was like, oh, she's cool. And we had our first kiss that night. Heyo. Yeah. I didn't think I was gonna kiss her. She didn't think I was gonna kiss her either. She thought we were just gonna be friends. But then I was like, ah. Oh. I was walking her back to her bike and I was like, this is it. You gotta, you gotta do it. And then you did it. And did it, did it, we did. Awesome. That is very, that's a good romantic note to leave on. But I got one more thing. Go for it. You. I got one more thing for you. Is it true that you consider yourself a tearing in the streets <laughs> and Drogo in the sheets. Yep, that is very accurate. And by Drogo in the sheets, I mean she's on top. <laughs> it's a Game of Thrones reference. Perfect. Well, my friend, <coughs> I think you set a new precedence. See this? Your wife set a precedence for the ladies. She made it through. You made it through. You set the bar by resaucing all your all your wings. You gotta resauce, all right? And, and you know, I think we try should do hers again. <laughs> Hey, it was still a painful experience. Hey, yeah. this one right here. When you when you have this one, you feel like you go through the fucking space gate. That one is, uh, yeah, that I one was is... On, yeah, like, that one warps you into time and space, and these last couple of ones are just <sighs> dealing with the effects. Well, you came out on top, man. You did it. And I think you really did set the bar. I think this is the spiciest it's ever been. Well, it's your moment, man. You won. Is there any, is there any parting words you want to leave the fans with? Anything you want to say to them? Love life, live life. Music is playable by anybody. Anybody can do it, I swear. It's not just a thing I'm saying, it's 100% true. And uh, I'm, I'm poor, but I managed to kind of travel, so travel. I, I haven't been a lot of places yet, <laughs> but it does change you. Do it, however you can. Fantastic. I think that's, I think that's it, I don't we know. It. We did it, one slow clap for you. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! We did it! Ah! Oh, I've drank so much water, I have a cramp. Oh man, I forgot to tell the fans about the time me and Marquette went to a nude beach. But, you you oh. can you can you can put it in there if you want, man. We oh. have the power of editing. Oh sweet. Last lovely wife thing. Do fun trips with your girlfriends and stuff and your wife. Like we took a trip when we were just dating. We went to a nude beach and it was awesome. I was gonna make a vlog about it, but. I was worried she'd get like a teacher job and he would be like, you went to a nude beach, but now she's a normie so I can tell everybody.